After I got through studying for a long, long time, I decided to attempt to put down a timeline for the book of Revelation. And the point behind it was not to, to make it more confusing, but it looks really confusing. The uh, green line up at the very top where it says intro is the chapter line. And you can see the chapter line goes from 1 to 2 to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14. It, it, it goes through, but it's not sequential. It's not in order. And you have to understand when, you, when you're looking at Scripture, it's not sequential. It's not in order. There's a, a, a copy of a Bible out that pretty much puts it in historical order. It's just called a chronological Bible. And I don't even agree with the chronology they have. But that's why we're all theologians. What we, we get to form our own opinions about what, what really matters and what, what we really think. And, of course, we all think we're right. And, and, and that's even more true up here. But there are some things about Scripture that are confusing, and that's one of them. It is not in order. This kind of makes a history book out of it. That, that's the whole reason for it. And it's a good thing to read if you decide you want to read it as history. But it, it puts together verses from different books and different places all over the place. So it's not, it's not an easy read, but it makes more sense to read it in order. Uh, the rapture. Everybody has a theory about the rapture and a lot of people, there's three different views of the rapture. And it's all based upon what people find in Scripture. I, I have a tendency to believe all three are true. Not just one, but all of them are true. And that's part of the sequence of the book of Revelation. And you can see that I've got a rapture there, I've got a rapture here, and then there's a rapture at the bottom, right there. The three views of the rapture are that the church does not go through the, the tribulation. And uh, whether you subscribe to that or not, I believe it. I believe that if you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, we're going to leave here one day. And it's kind of proven through Scripture in, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I'm just going to read that to you quickly, if I can find it. Uh, in chapter 2, it talks about, starting in verse 3, Let nobody deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a great falling away first. Uh, we're kind of in that falling away. And the man of sin will be revealed, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, who is worshipped, so that he, as God, sits in the temple of God. Of course, the temple has not been built, but that's going to happen. Uh, remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things? So Paul is telling the Thessalonians, I've already told you this. Uh, he goes on and says, and 
know ye that who restrains that he might be revealed in his time, that the mystery of iniquity is already at work. Only he who now hinders will continue to hinder until he be taken away. So the question becomes, where is the Holy Spirit right now? It's in here, isn't it? Now, if God takes the Holy Spirit, that's that's the restrainer. You know, the Holy Spirit restrains us from doing bad things sometimes. He restrains bad people from doing bad things a lot. But if God takes the Holy Spirit out, is he going to take it out of you? No. He's going to take you out with it. So that's the first rapture. When the Holy Spirit it, it leaves, we're going to leave with it. That's that's the rapture of the church before the tribulation. This is just an explanation of where we get sequential scripture from. And it's way too long. I decided not to even include it. So, once the church is raptured out, then the tribulation can begin and the man of sin will be revealed and and all that stuff will happen. The, uh, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Will show up. And. The first seal is the white horse. The second seal is the red horse. Third seal is the black horse. That's when chaos will start to reign on the earth. Governments will fail. Uh, people will go into hiding. The, the guys who have built bunkers and stored all their guns and money and and uh, food in holes in the, in the in the wilderness will be sought out, and and they'll be the ones that help survive or help people survive. The The issue of what comes next is not sequential in Revelation. But the good thing is, is we're not going to be here to see it. If you've accepted Jesus, you're not going to be here. There's a thing at the very top of, of, of this diagram. And it's talking about the uh, marriage supper of the Lamb in blue. We're going to spend seven years at a party uh, celebrating our salvation and the salvation of, of the world, really, because of our being grafted into the olive tree that is Israel. We're the wild olive branches. You ever been called wild? Uh, well, we're the wild olive branches that have been grafted in and that's talked about in Romans chapter 11. Paul said that uh, that some of the original branches were cut off and we were grafted in. So that we're part of the nation of Israel now. And that's an important distinction because we're the ones that are benefiting from it. The nation of Israel is not even benefiting from it. <clears throat> when When... The rapture of the church happens. God will come down and grab 144,000 male unmarried Jews. And they'll become evangelists for the world. There's 12,000 from each of the tribes. From each of the 12 tribes. And they become the evangelists for the world. But really they're the evangelists for the remnant. We all heard about the remnant, the remnant, the remnant. Uh, I know Jews who are saved and believe in Jesus. I've been to Messianic synagogues. So there's a lot of them, but they're going to go in the rapture. And the 144,000 are going to go out and evangelize the world. And I would assume primarily it's going to be the nation of Israel. Because those that are left and don't believe 
are going to be condemned. And Revelation talks about the, the men that are left on earth who reject God. And God sends these huge stones to crush them, huge balls of fire to burn them, that they're going to curse God. That's not a that's not a good picture. And now remember, we're going to be at a party up here, and uh, we're not going to be bothered with that. So after the seals, which are the horse, then will come the trumpets, and this is when life on earth is going to be destroyed by God Himself in the judgments. And after the trumpets uh, will come the bowls. And that's after the midpoint of the tribulation. And this is, you may not agree with my order of events, but all these events are in the book of Revelation. And what happens at the midpoint is, all the people that that 144,000 have saved get taken out. That's the second rapture. And it's talked about in, in, in Revelation chapter 11. <clears throat> These the two witnesses come to, to, uh, to decide the fate of Jerusalem itself. And there's only two guys in history who have never died. You know who they are? Elijah was one of them. Who? Enoch. Enoch and Elijah are the only two that have never died. And Scripture says it's appointed unto man once to die. So the two witnesses come back, and it's Enoch and Elijah, and they go to preaching in the streets of Jerusalem, and finally Satan gets tired of it and kills them. And three days later they rise. So by that time, everybody that has died has risen. And they are raptured out. Then comes the bad part, the great tribulation. And that's uh, men are covered with painful sores and boils, just like Job. The trial of Job hits mankind and there's no escape. Uh, the sea turns to blood. Now, a lot, of, a lot of countries make their entire living from the sea. I, I was in West Africa once, and the whole town that I happened to be staying in, which was called Banana, which is crazy, but that's what it was, they all went out to the sea every day to fish. Their whole life was dependent upon what they caught. The fresh water's polluted, the sun heat increases and scorches people. Nothing sound fun. Uh, darkness covers the earth, and then the Euphrates dries up. I know there's a lot in the news about the Tigris and Euphrates rivers drying up right now. Folks, that isn't it. That's not the one God's talking about. Because at this time, <clears throat> he has gathered a, an army to come against Israel, and the Euphrates dries up so they can cross. Uh, I don't know if you know where the Tigris Euphrates are, but there's, there's not a whole lot on the other side of the Tigris Euphrates except Turkey, Iran, Iraq, and parts of Russia and the middle, Far East. So it's got to be those countries that are coming against Israel. The I put these churches on here. Um, how many of those churches that are in the book of Revelation chapters 2 and 3 are still in existence? Do you know? Not a one of them. They're all in western Turkey which is all Islamic now. My daughter, uh, 
few years back, uh, took a brave jaunt and traveled to Turkey, of all places, with a guy who looked like he was a Muslim, so they kind of got away with it, even though she's a blonde. But uh, she visited the site of all seven churches, and they are there's nothing left of the churches. It's hard to find anything left of some of them. So there's an anti-Christ religion out there, whether it's Islam or something else, I don't know, but that's totally against the celebration of those churches in the first two books of Revelation. They're all gone. And during the tribulation, the churches will be all gone. That's not a good thing to be around when this stuff happens because they're going to be destroyed. That's the first thing they're going to attack. They're going to destroy the credibility of Christianity. That's what the Antichrist is all about. The good thing is, is that eventually... After the bold judgments, Christ comes back to fight the battle of Armageddon. Yeah, it's on there. That blue spot over there. I should have made it red. <clears throat> but uh, he comes back to fight the battle of Armageddon and set up his millennial reign. That's the thousand year reign of Christ. And because you are all believers, you're going to have a share in ruling the earth during that time. Which is kind of hard to believe, but you always wanted to tell everybody what to do. Well, you're going to get a chance. God's provided for that. At that time, Satan is put in the bottomless pit for the thousand years. And we live in total peace for a thousand years. John Lennon had a song called Give Peace a Chance. Well, guess what? At the end of that thousand years, Satan is released for a short time and he leads a rebellion against God again. So you understand, peace won't even do it. He hadn't read his Bible, obviously. Peace will not make it work. Only the millennial reign of Christ will make it work. Only our submission to Christ will make it work. And that's the hardest job we have, is submitting ourselves, our will, our lives, our everything about us to the will of Christ for a period of time. And that's just the period of time we're on earth. And that's tough. So at the end of that, when that judgment takes place, then we all go before the great white throne. In heaven, and we're all given accolades according to what we did right, not according to what we did wrong. Thank goodness. That's all been paid for. We'll be given accolades based upon what we did right. And then, if the scripture is true, we're all going to be given crowns, and we're going to willingly give up those crowns at the feet of Jesus because that's not what really matters to us. And then we will go into the third rapture, and that's everybody that's a believer will all of a sudden be taken from the face of the earth off of the earth, and the earth will be totally destroyed. Matter of fact, the heavens and the earth will be totally destroyed. And there'll be a, that's what the new H and new E stand for, new heaven and new earth. And we'll all go there. That's the third rapture. So there are people who believe it starts at the, the first rapture starts at the beginning. There's those that believe it's in the middle and those that are believe it's only at the end and everybody goes through it. <clears throat> it's not a question of do we get our theology right. The real question is are we saved? It's the salvation that makes it okay for you to believe anything you want. We don't have to get it all right. Matter of fact, I can guarantee you we won't. None of us will. We won't get it all right. But if we're saved, We'll end up 
in 21 and 22. The last two chapters at the new heaven and the new earth. That's what's important. It's not about, do I get enough of it right now that I can tell everybody what to do? That doesn't work. You know, we've tried that. You've tried it. I can't even get my kids to mind sometimes. So you know what it's like. My son took off and went to Red Lodge uh, for the weekend, and I told him before he left, I said, you you, you contact your mother every hour. <laughs> How many of you think he did it? <laughs> See, you, you know the problem. Kids don't mind. And he's, he's 35, 36 years old. <laughs> I'm going to have to give him the what for us when he gets back. And he'll ignore that. You see, God's plan depends upon us believing his son. Not on whether we believe that timeline. Not on whether we believe anything theologically. We can have it all our own way theologically. It's do we believe in Jesus. That's the important thing. Well, that's, that's about all I've got to say. <clears throat> if you don't know Jesus, you need to talk to somebody that does. You need to get that straight before it's too late. Because the uh, timetable is running out. I mean, everybody believes they live in the last days. Well, I'm pretty sure we live in the last days. So we need to get that straight. So talk to someone if you don't know Jesus. Let's close in a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that, that you've laid out the plan. And how we believe the plan works out is not important. What we believe about Jesus is what's really important. Help us to put all of our love, all of our trust, all of our faith in Jesus and Jesus alone. Help us to be yours all the days of our lives. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.